Who needs J2 rocket engines when you can drive to the moon? In May 2011, the Space Shuttle Endeavour was finally decommissioned after nearly two decades of dedicated service, including a trip up to the Hubble Space Telescope and more than one rendezvous with the International Space Station. The final frontier? LA. Happens to the best of us. No, specifically, it was the California Science Center, and you would think that a space shuttle that had ridden tubes of fire into the lethal emptiness of the thermosphere would be more than capable of going on a little West Coast road trip without a hitch, right? Enter the hitch. You see, the shuttle and its towing vehicle together were too heavy to cross over the Manchester Boulevard Bridge, which crosses over the 405, one of the busiest highways in the nation. The shuttle weighed about 150,000 pounds, and the trailer assembly underneath it, together, well, that nearly doubled the weight to almost 300,000 pounds. That's way too much. So how did they solve this problem? They called a friend with a pickup truck. Yeah. A standard off-the-lot pickup truck, a Toyota Tundra Crew Max 5.7 liter V8. There were no sci-fi mods, there was no military tech, it was the real deal. Let's put this into perspective. I mean, we've come a long way since the days of the horse and buggy. We're talking about an approximately 6,000 pound vehicle towing a 300,000 pound payload. A thousand little improvements to automotive technology over history have gotten us to where we are today, where a next generation pickup truck can drag the old way of getting into space to its final resting place. And I can't help but wonder, is this the end of an era? Unfortunately, rocket delivery comes with a pretty hefty fee. Back in the space shuttle days, it cost about $10,000 to put one pound of stuff into orbit. So think about that, $10,000 for a power drill in space. I mean, even Congress won't pay that much, right? Maybe we could find a more economically efficient way if we did build a road into space and used wheels to get there. You know, driving to space, maybe uh, not a space highway or maybe a, maybe an elevator. Start with a flexible tether woven out of a high tensile material stretching up from the ground to the heavens. This tether leads beyond an offload point in geostationary orbit and on and on and on to a counterweight, whipping along through space as the Earth spins. Now this counterweight could be anything from a captured asteroid to a huge space station. The downward force of gravity on the lower half of the tether combines with the centrifugal force of the counterweight to pull the cable taut. So how do you get into space? You climb the cable. A climber vehicle cranks on up the road with friction-based rollers like the wheels of a pickup truck. Now to be fair, there are many physicists who have some serious doubts about the space elevator approach. It may be too difficult for us to achieve. I mean, think about it. You need a really high tensile strength cable and even carbon nanotubes might not be up to the task. But trying never hurt anybody. And even if we try and fail, we're gonna learn a lot along the way. So let's just assume for the sake of argument that it is possible. What would this mean? We could build a lot more stuff out in space, including space stations, spacecraft. We could end up creating colonies on the moon and Mars because it's much cheaper to get the material where it needs to be. And we could build more space elevators. You've just opened up the floodgates. Hey, maybe one day I'll be sitting in a space elevator myself as it goes up in a pressurized cabin and I'm just listening to space elevator music and wondering how long I'm gonna have to endure that.